This is the second video of the first learning module for um, digital storytelling. We're going to go over the hero's journey. So we just went over beginning, middle, and end, narrative arc, very basic elements of storytelling that we see in our lives. We see it in um, the way our life is literally structured, but also in our stories. A twist on that that is often utilized is the hero's journey. And as you can see, the hero's journey is very, it's kind of cyclical. You can go through it a number of times and come back in the same way that you might have many climaxes in your narrative arc. And it takes the narrative arc, but it's a specific spin on the narrative arc. And as you can tell by the fact it's the hero's journey, it's often used in uh, fiction where you want to have a hero. But we'll use it in lots of other places other than just things like Lord of the Rings as well. So the theory and the practice. In theory, in the hero's journey, a call to adventure is going to draw the hero away from their ordinary life. You're going to be aided by a mentor, a sidekick, a wise guide, or a wise guy. And the hero is going to cross the threshold into the unknown, into their special world, go through an ordeal, come out the other end, learning something that they didn't have before. Now, sometimes you're then going to take that knowledge back with you and then start all over again. And sometimes you're going to take the road back home. For example, The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy is searching for a better existence. She's bored with life in Kansas, and she thinks she's going to find it in the Emerald City. She finds a magic pair of shoes, attracts a merry band of helpers, and on her way to the Emerald City, she battles villains and ultimately finds what she's looking for. Not in the Emerald City, but back in the place that she started. She goes home to Kansas with new knowledge that she can take with her to build that better life. And this basic story structure can be utilized in many areas outside of storytelling. Here we see the hero's journey as, emblem, as uh, exemplified by a book being taken out of the library. You can see that it's the call number to adventure, the band of companions as you go to study, trials and ordeals, please don't spill coffee on a library book, but only on your own. They go into the belly of the whale, then uh, have reward for suffering before they are returned home via the book drop to be taken out again. Its patterns can be seen in ordinary events um, as well as in the hero. With the circular pattern, you often have many journeys within the overall stories. We have diversions and subplots, just like we had with the Three Little Pigs. So we've got this kind of more fleshed out, oops, sorry, more fleshed out version here um, on the right, where we've got this departure, your initiation. You cross your first threshold, and sometimes you have multiple thresholds. Sometimes you fail that first test, and we can see some examples and some... Um, kind of archetypes of these. And sometimes we have a refusal to return in the way that we refuse the call to adventure. And then we come back and we return. Um, in a way, we can apply this to many things that are just as banal as we have heroic. So I pose a question to you. How is a trip through Ikea like a journey to hell and back? If the hero's journey is a journey to hell and then returning to the land of the living, how is a trip to Ikea the same? Is a trip to Ikea a maze, a puzzle designed to confuse, or a labyrinth, a long guided path that takes you from beginning to end? Ikea is a labyrinth, and it will take you on a journey from the ordinary world you're going to cross the threshold and descend into the special world where you're going to face lots of um, adversaries, things that you have to battle against. You've got conflict. And then there's a reward and the road back when you return with things that you didn't have when you set off. Architect Alan Penn explains that the IKEA store establishes a guided route that visitors are more or less compelled to follow. There are ways that you can circumnavigate if you have special knowledge and you know the secret routes of Ikea. Some of us are better than others. But more or less, you have to follow the paths that they lay out and they do it for a reason. Here's where storytelling goes beyond just me telling you a story in order to entertain you to telling a story as a way to 
maybe guide your emotions or convince you to buy things or prime you for your cinnamon bun at the end. The portal is your entrance into the lobby. That is your portal out of the ordinary world. You literally will ascend into the showroom. You've got ascending action where you literally will ride your escalator up. You will go around, you will go through your various tests, you collect locations for the items that you're going to have to retrieve. This is you gathering your merry band of helpers along the way. Maybe your helper are those tiny little pencils they give you too and the little measuring tapes. Before reaching the warehouse, you have to go through the market hall. You have to go through your descent. You have to go through your valley of pots and pans, the forest of flower pots. And they're hoping to entice you along the way, like the siren call into the area of photo frames you don't need. But then you get to the reckoning is near at the belly of the beast. You seize your reward in the rare house using all of the tips you've picked up along the way of where to find your different things. Before you return home, your hero, you get the boon of a cinnamon bun for the road. And then that's your final reward. You left with something you didn't have when you started your furniture and you get to go home. Um, You've returned from hell and now you get to enter a whole new hell of trying to put that piece of furniture together. We can see it in advertising a lot. This link here, I'll also put the link in Blackboard so you can click on it if you want. You can watch a um, ad that was directed for Apple for music and for using your um, different Apple home appliances. And what you can see in this image here, they lay it out for you in the article as well, is how the hero's journey is shown in this ad for your iPhone. So we can use it really creatively to change the emotion. Your emotion will go through that roller coaster as you watch the ad until you get back to the beginning and the person starts the exact place that they, they end in the same place that they started from, but their emotional state and the advertisers hope your emotional state has been transformed by the journey. Or as they say in Fury Road, where must we go, we who wander this wasteland in search of our better selves? So one of the things that I want you to understand uh, from this with the hero's tale is not just the elements where you have your call to action. You often will refuse that call to action and then are compelled into it whether you like it or not. And you're going to cross that threshold and then that's your kind of climax or part one of your climax is crossing that threshold. And then you're going to have more rising action as you go through various ordeals until you get to the point where you get that reward, you get the magic ring, you can cross the threshold back into the ordinary world with your new knowledge that the ruby slippers were in you all along. And then you either return to your world or you set off again. We can apply it to lots of different situations. We can apply it in advertising, like the last example, or in your experience. So in the same way that our life is laid out like a story, um, how we walk through a gallery is also laid, it's also using a story. So here we have two examples of ways in which you could walk, you could set up a gallery in order to have people walk through it. Now, the bottom version hopefully would be the one that's maybe um, better laid out to have people actually experience the work. You can't just walk through it without looking at anything. You have to navigate around. Also, you know pretty much how someone's going to go through from beginning to end so you can control the narrative experience. A lot of how advertisers and marketers are going to want to use storytelling is to be able to control what people are going to think and feel. Now, there are some cons to the second example. The beginning and the end space isn't particularly well used. There's an area that almost everybody misses. So what happens if you're the photographer whose piece of artwork is on this last wall in here? You're going to feel pretty cheated. And if you've got cleaners who need to go through here, it's going to take them a lot longer to navigate or your docents going from the beginning to the end. So there's practical considerations, even if you are structuring the narrative that you need to think about. Whereas something like this is interesting to navigate nonlinear, but it's possibly confusing. And that pro of being nonlinear can also be a con. If you want super linearity, you can go with something like this, but it's boring and space is not well utilized. So try to keep in mind, there's no one size fits all answer for any of these things. 
And so this is where I want us to keep in mind basic structures, but also always think about the question that's being posed to you and who you're talking to and who your audience is so that we utilize the right tool for the particular problem we have in front of us at the time. So in practice, we can use the hero's journey as a way of thinking about our experiences out in the world. Do we have an experience um, like here on the left, we have Chipotle, where you're involved from beginning to end in the production and the um, staging of your particular experience? Or do you have a McDonald's where everything happens behind the scenes and you go and you get your ready-made at the beginning and then you're given the same thing at the end no matter what? How do these things make us feel if we're participators or spectators? And so when we are designing our stories and we're designing how the viewer is going to experience them, make sure that you think about that viewer. Make sure that you know whether or not you want them or need them to be a participant or a spectator in that particular plot. So plots don't just apply to entertainment and to stories that we tell in the traditional sense, but almost everything that we make an experience as well. So maybe now you're going to look and you're going to see some of these narrative arcs and hero's journeys in your everyday experiences as well. I hope you do. And we're going to start putting them into practice um, very shortly. <laughs>